Hello, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. Yes, Chelsea have been quiet. Well, I say we've been quiet. Officially, we've been quiet. I, th I feel like everything got going yesterday. I've been busy. I've been watching the Euros. I've been over to Germany to see England, to see a couple of other countries play as well. Kind of understand what the Euros is about in terms of actually being there myself as a fan, seeing what the other cultures bring to the tournament seeing some players I've never seen play before and just getting a feel for it. I've never ever experienced an international tournament before and I've managed to do it this summer and I'm very, very grateful for that. And it was an amazing experience and I've taken a little bit of time away from this channel because I feel like nothing's really been certain. There's been a lot of smoke and sometimes it's with fire, sometimes it's without and, you know, I've been waiting for a couple of definites to come in before we sort of nailed down and said, look, here we go. The 24-25 season is getting underway and we can start chatting about things that are absolutely concrete. And what we can say is that yesterday, July the 1st, the ball got rolling for Chelsea Football Club. We saw the departures announced of a couple of names for Chelsea that have generated, in my opinion, really, really good transfer fees. We said goodbye to Ian Matson. We've generated a really sizable transfer fee there for him. Considering how many times he actually played for Chelsea, it's a fantastic amount of money. Obviously, he had a good end to the season over at Dortmund. He now finds himself on his way to Aston Villa for an amount over £35 million is is what's being reported. We then also said goodbye to another young prospect in Amari Hutchinson. He obviously spent the season on loan at Ipswich last year. They've now made that deal permanent in a deal upwards of 20 million. And then we also saw a confirmation of Lewis Hall moving to Newcastle United and that fee or deal being triggered that was sort of agreed last year and if he played enough games, that would have to happen. And that's exactly what has happened. As of July the 1st, Lewis Hill is now permanently a Newcastle United player. And that's a fee upwards of 30 million. So we've raised almost 80 million, if you like, in terms of transfer fees for players that combined have probably got 30 Chelsea games between them. That's fantastic. This is where, for me, Chelsea have for years absolutely excelled in terms of generating a great fee in terms of player sales and valuing our assets and fair play. Fair play to every single person involved in that. But we saw the confirmation of Dewsbury Hall. He's joining from Leicester. He's been a boyhood Leicester City player um, for 17 years, he said in his goodbye letter. And he basically just said, look, Leicester, I got relegated with you. I wanted to make sure we return to the Premier League at the very first chance. The first time we were asked to return to the Premier League, we made sure we did it. But now it's my time to go, but I've left you in a really, really good position. That's kind of summarising what he said. It's a really long, thought-out sort of goodbye letter and, and it kind of shows the attitude and the player that this guy is. He's been very, very loyal to a team and now he wants to further his career and he's hoping that it can be done at Chelsea Football Club. Let's get into this and why I actually think this is a really good signing in terms of the player himself and what I think he could achieve but also the direction that I think Chelsea Football Club are heading in because Let's look at this. Over the last, what, two years, where we've been owned by Clear Lake Capital, where Whit Stanley and Stewart have sort of had an impact on transfers and recruitment, it's been a little bit all over the place. I feel like no one's really been bought for a system. Every time a manager's come in, he's very rarely been backed. I mean, Pochettino, how many of the players that we signed were for him, were his suggestions? Even Graham Potter, don't think he even got a chance to get back. Did he really, to be honest? I, I don't think any of the players that came in were his suggestions. Tuchel as well. A couple of the players maybe were players he identified, but then swiftly he was removed before he even really had a chance with most of those players. So we're seeing now Maresca come in and the first sort of marquee signing is a player that he knows unbelievably well. So what does this say? Is this suggesting that Maresca has an input in terms of transfers, in terms of recruitment? Well, for me, it does a little bit because I don't think Chelsea identified Dewsbury Hall as a, as a signing that they should go after. Once again, we've hijacked a Brighton deal. 
which concerns me a little bit because if I feel like Whit Stanley is literally just waiting to see who Brighton move for and then he picks up the phone and goes, oh yeah, it works at Brighton. We're going to do exactly the same. We're going to mimic that and hopefully Chelsea's pull is enough for us to hijack that deal because Whit Stanley is obsessed with how Brighton worked and, and it seems as if the the owners and Egg Barley and Todd Bowley might be obsessed as well, um, judging by how many staff members we've hired and the, the deals that we've hijacked and players that we've bought from Brighton. So look, away from the Brighton side of things, which do frustrate me a little bit, I actually think this is a good sign-in. Maresca's probably turned around and said, look, if he's willing to leave Leicester, I know how good he can be. We should really try and make this deal happen. And this isn't one of those random ones. This is a deal where he's identified a player and said, look, I know what he offers to my squad. I have proven I know how to get the best out of this player. Chelsea don't have a left-footed centre midfielder of note. They don't have the type of centre midfielder that Dewsbury Hall is in the team. He's very, very good with the ball at his feet. He, he covers ground that I don't think many of our midfielders do tremendously well. He's, his ball retention is fantastic in terms of himself physically when he's under pressure and when he's getting challenged he's able to retain possession and that isn't just with a boring pass that is beating his man turning his man taking a man on and then sort of progressing Chelsea further up the pitch hopefully is what we'll see from him in a blue shirt and we've definitely seen it in a blue shirt at Leicester he played against Chelsea not too long ago and looked really really good really promising and definitely a better player than I saw leave the Premier League he was very, very raw the last time I remember him in the Prem. And I feel like he might have sort of elevated his game a little bit since. So for me, without trying to blow this out of proportion, because I don't think he's a world beater. And I'll be very surprised if he starts instantly. Okay, I think mean, he's going to have to work his way into the team. I think this is a good signing because I can understand the reasoning behind it. We've gone out, like I've said previously, and signed players where I've really struggled to understand why we might have made that signing with the manager that we've got or the squad that we've got and the fact that we've got three, four, five players in that position and we've got weaknesses in other areas. This one I can understand. Yes, don't get me wrong, the midfield is looking overloaded. I expect to see a couple of departures, if I'm being honest with you, in terms of our midfield area. Um, and I expect one of them to be pretty high profile and I would say that's Conor Gallagher upwards to be honest. I don't think anyone below is high profile enough or affects me enough if they leave because I've probably not seen enough from them in a Chelsea shirt. But for someone who's played as many minutes as Conor Gallagher, I feel like Dewsbury Hall might start... I'm not saying they're the same player. In fact, what I'd actually say is Dewsbury Hall might be more of a blend between a Conor Gallagher and a Mason Mount. He's probably somewhere in the middle of that because he comes with a real high energy and a desire to win the ball and a desire to help his team out with and without the ball, which I think Conor Gallagher has been fantastic at and I think Mason Mount has been fantastic at. But in areas where Conor Gallagher's lacked in terms of creativity that someone like Mason Mount had a bit more of, Dewsbury Hall is definitely leaning more towards the Mason Mount side of things. So... Yeah, he's a very, very durable player, but a player who has an eye for goal and definitely an eye for that creative opportunity as well. So I really think that this ticks a lot of boxes for me and what Chelsea don't have. And it ticks a lot of boxes for me in terms of how I believe recruitment should work at a football club. So yeah, excited about this, intrigued to see what happens. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below because quite honestly... This is the type of transfer I like to see. Do you like to see it? Yes, I know Chelsea should be aiming higher. But whilst we're not, and whilst this board is going about transfers in the way that it is, this is one I probably prefer. How well do you think he'll do for Chelsea? And do you think we're going to see someone leave? Let me know in the comments. If you're liking the content, make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. We are on the road to 3,000 subscribers, which is absolutely crazy. Catch me on all the other socials to keep up to date with what's going on with Chelsea and my thoughts on everything and the Euros. And I will see you in a bit.